I think if you, if you go back and look at um, some of the earlier work that we'd done, to a large degree that pull was from consumers and then consumers into IT. And I think we're seeing that happen again. Um, yesterday during the keynote we showed some demos of the Xbox Connect, for example. We showed the Windows Phone and there are some amazingly exciting things that are coming up through the consumer side that's really driven by this consumerization of IT that's creating some fantastic innovation, visibility to customers about some of their amazing work that's been done in Microsoft, where people are looking back saying, this stuff is incredible, there's amazing, anywhere where there's software where Microsoft has a presence, you're starting to see again some really incredibly interesting products and now services, cloud-based services happening at the same time. Yeah, actually the, the cloud is, is a huge space for, for, for Microsoft as well and, and you, you know you mentioned the integration of Xbox and everything and it's amazing how it integrates, how the gaming side for example integrates with uh, Windows Phone 7 for example and, it, and it's such an important part of everyday life, you know. It, it's kind of the business side and the leisure side is just that, that bridge and that gap is... Well, it, it's a blur. It really yeah. is blurring together. One of the things we didn't show with the Connect is the ability to have video conferencing now on an Xbox and share that video conferencing more openly, more broadly. Um, and so you really are seeing this blur in the personas of who I am at home, who I am at work. Uh, one of the things we described, for example, was the Sunday evening experience of sitting on my sofa watching TV, interacting with my gadgets at home, and wanting to have that same experience at work on Monday morning. Mm. And the sort of transition from Sunday to Monday is really that blur is happening in very interesting ways. Do you not think that sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a, such an overload of, of information that people don't know how to deal with all this overload of information? You've got so many devices, you've got so many different email addresses, you've got mobile devices. It sometimes becomes a bit too much. Um, People are going to some of these new services and facilities and really are publishing a ton of data. I think part of what we're trying to do both with Windows Live Essentials and Windows Phone we showed yesterday as well is providing the single view into this information. So you start to filter it mm. and you get an integrated view, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your Messenger, your communication starts to aggregate and come into a single place so that for example on the phone you can quickly look at the phone and get a snapshot of it. I think what people are then going to decide with the information is what's important and what's not. And yeah. I think we'll start to filter out some things. Actually, you actually raise a very, very good point there because that's one of the things that I absolutely love about Windows Phone 7 is the way it aggregates all that information. So you've got that one contact and it, you know, their, their information comes from their Facebook feed, for example, and their latest photographs. So you don't have to physically go into those separate uh, applications to have a look at what's going on, which is brilliant. Well, even if they're an Outlook contact and they've got Facebook, we'll sort of merge and blur those two things together so that you see both the personas, yeah. the sort of work persona and the social persona. Yeah. We're experimenting internally, for example, on something we call Office Talk, which is an internal uh, system that we're using to identify um, chatting, um, Twittering internally to use that from a business perspective. So, for example, on i9, as people are experimenting with information with Internet Explorer 9, what are some of the features? What are some of the tricks? We're using Twitter like feeds to do that and looking at the response of people, how quickly do they respond to it? How quickly is that information disseminating? Learning that and saying, wow, yeah. we can take some of this sort of social learning and put that into the corporate environment as well. There's a couple of things that happen from something like Link. One is this integration of all of my communication, my mail, chat, video, voice, desktop sharing. All of that happens in one place. So it becomes the hub, as we say, for that central communication. But I think what's also happening there was, if you go back and think about communication, just sort of a quick history, I'd, I'd send you a letter in the mail. and. The half-life of that communication was a couple of days. I'd send you a letter, you know, you'd write a letter back to me. Yeah. Then we invented faxes and it went from days to hours and then we invented email and you could do a couple of email turns pretty quickly. What chat has done, whether it's video, voice, or, is it's now compressed it even further. So it's now in minutes yeah. and the ability to have a conversation, make a decision, find people, and it could be a business discussion you're trying to have, it could be product support discussion, a lot, of, a lot of us use that technology today, or it could be finding a friend who's close by to say you want to have a rendezvous somewhere with that friend. That speed up is happening really, really quickly. Absolutely, absolutely. And, 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 and where, where, does it, where does it take the future? I mean, 
we've got all these great products at the moment. We've got this instant messaging you're talking about, and I want to touch on Windows Live Essentials, which I think is an absolutely brilliant suite of software. But where's the next generation of Microsoft products going? What you're seeing in Live Essentials and also in the phone is the integration of two platforms, the, the, the phone platform or, or, or the PC platform and the services that are sitting in the cloud. So the phone becomes a set of services, whether it's Xbox Live that we're talking about coming into the phone or Facebook, all being integrated into that. And so I think the future generations are going to be what are the cloud services that are being made available and how can they be consumed? Because in the end, you have to have a device to get at them. You have to have some way of getting at that information, yeah, either yeah. consuming it or authoring it in some way. Yeah. And then it's these other fascinating services that are going to come through. Geo services, where, where am I at a point in time? I think that part of this part that I love about this is it's a generational thing. Um, my kids use this stuff differently than I do. Yes. I'm not sure that I want everybody to know what street corner I'm on at a particular time of day. Um, I'm not sure I want to advertise I'm not at home, for example. But for my kids, absolutely. They want to tell somebody what address they're at, what intersection on the street, just in case there's somebody who they know who's around the corner so they can meet. So this notion of privacy of information is very different on a generational view. So I mm -hmm. think if, if you think of today's university students yeah. in three or four years' time, when they're in the workforce, the power of the workforce, their expectations are going to be very different than the workforce today. They're going to expect some of that same technology is going to happen to them at work. So I think that the drive is going to be part of this generational drive that's going to push some of us older folk a little bit further back. <laughs> when can we expect uh, you know, search engines like Bing becoming more localized in South Africa? Yeah. It's, it's really, Bing is about, is a, we're learning a lot with Bing, and the local relevancy, you have to have um, local content, uh, you have to have local providers, and so the biggest constraint to actually getting more local impact is the availability of maps, the availability of news information, the availability of geo information, and so the Bing team is sort of progressing around the world to get that level of local data. And it's being built up. I actually don't know the, the plan exactly about what it is around mm -hmm. some of the more local relevancy here. But Bing as a platform has a vehicle to build apps. There are actually Bing apps that you can build yeah. where you can look, overlay on the maps, for example, virtual realities of restaurants, of hotels, of sporting events, of, of Twittering yes. even on top of those maps. And so I think you'll see those things happening very quickly over here. Some of the availability of the other information is just really a progression of the Bing team sort of progressing around the world. What other, th um, you know, we, we just touched on, I mean, all these, all these technologies that are coming out of Microsoft are so exciting. Can you share anything with us uh, that, that's going to blow away the socks of many people that could be coming out in the next 18 months that Microsoft's working on at the moment, like a real wild technology? Well, I think that the things that are available in the, in the short term that are going to just, people are going to love really are two things, which is one, the phone. And if you think about the phone that we're releasing now, it's really the sort of first part of it. And you could be sure that we're working on the pieces that are coming. You know, yeah. software's hard. Software takes yeah. a long time. And so the pieces that are coming around uh, mobility, the phone, and expanding on that portfolio, I think you'll see different kinds of input being interesting. So on the, on the new phone, for example, speech becomes a major input. It's not just about typing, it's can you, give, you know, can you talk to your phone and ask it to do things for you? Directions, for example. Okay. Speech, touch, gesturing. Um, I think that the Xbox Connect, uh, which we demoed again here yesterday. Wow. it's mind-blowing. It's doing, first it's a lot of exercise, when you've got to move around, you're, you're moving, but as you sort of start to get the interaction with these systems, think about you know, movement and recognition. If you, if you saw... Yes, there you walk up to the Connect system, it recognizes you. Yes. Um, it could log you on, it logs you on to Xbox Live. What would happen in a banking scenario when you walk up to a kiosk mm -hmm. and the system recognizes you, does some facial recognition, maybe it asks for a fingerprint? So it's, I think you're going to see these technologies change like that. So you'll see the two real physical things with the phone and Connect that I think are just going to be amazing in terms of p helping people discover new ways of interacting. Uh, and then it's these new ways of input where surfaces become computers. I can touch mm -hmm. things. Uh, we have a great facility where we have a wall that's a computer that you can touch the display. And in order to do that, we've had to work with the display vendors yeah. to help them 
build out these systems. And, and Windows Phone 7 is, must be very exciting, and there's a lot of catch-up for Microsoft to do in this regard. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, you're sitting on 5% below market share. Right. Uh, there's a lot of catch-up, but I honestly think that this product that you have over here is a winner, um, and it's going to be interesting to see how it, how it gets... Uh, into the infrastructure and, and out onto the various handset manufacturers. That must be the biggest challenge at the moment. It is. It, you know, it was a big investment for us. It was really take a step back, think about phones, the way we want to use it, the way people want to communicate, collaborate, search for their information. So it took a lot of rethinking, not only the underlying technology, but that user experience that you see when you pick up the phone in the hubs. It took time to do that. Now. It's actually, there's the mechanics of the operation. Can we get the phones into the hands of consumers? South Africa is one of the first places actually to get the phones as well. So we're, as we're launching around the world, it was a global launch and the phones are being made available in different countries, um, depending on the, the telcos and the integration yeah. between the manufacturers and the telco. I believe it's early November in South Africa. I yeah, believe it's a, pretty close yeah, to that. Very, very yeah, no, it's, it's, it's with the rest of the world in terms of the timing. It's just some case the logistics of getting yeah. the parts here. Are you able to talk, and there's been a lot of speculation in the market about Microsoft's relationship with Nokia. Mm -hmm. is, is it out of the realms of possibility that a, a Windows Phone 7 uh, operating system will come up on a Nokia anytime soon? I, I, I can't comment on the relationship. I think what will be interesting for Nokia is to look at the marketplace of the various software solutions that are there and then sort of try and reflect on their current technology set. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're still in a very important player in the market, sure, sure. really worldwide just incredible penetration. Yeah. I think for them to think about the platforms they want to invest in, um, how much they want to do, it, I think the, you know, what we're doing I think is a good opportunity for them to really yeah. investigate it. Now, Norm, you, how long have you been out of the country for? The last time I was here was about 14 years ago. 14 years ago. Um, when did you actually leave South Africa? I uh, originally uh, went to grad school in 1977. 1977. So, it's a different place. So those people that are watching this, this video yeah. conferencing are probably thinking, you know, that's, that's a South African accent. You haven't managed to <laughs> shake off that South African accent. Uh, formerly from King David High School, born and bred in Johannesburg. Um, what's it like living abroad, watching South Africa from a distance, mm -hmm. and coming back after 14 years? Uh, I'm sure there must be some significant things that you've picked up. Yeah, it's... Um, I see South African snapshots, so I see it in discrete, so you don't see it changing incrementally. This time around was actually pretty interesting for me because you landed at a new airport in Johannesburg, a new airport here in Durban, so you see the infrastructure being built out from the World Cup and whatever. It's very interesting for me to see the country sort of continue to expand and grow like that. I, I wore, you know, one of the things that we, I gather working on is the sort of broadband communication infrastructure inside of the country, but only from here connecting out. Mm, mm. I, as I understand, there's some new um, submarine lines that are going to come yes, in. Yes, yes, yes. That will make a huge difference, I think, in the ability for um, connectivity here into the rest of what's available. Yeah. So I see those sorts of things happening, but there's still some stuff that's amazing. We were out for dinner last night, and I had piri piri king prawns. Man, it was, <laughs> it was wonderful. <laughs> I hope you're a rabbi not watching that. <laughs> but um, South Africa's perceptions, uh, you know, from abroad have, have changed quite a bit. I mean, yeah. you've been, you know, South Africa has been a country that's been through a very traumatic past with apartheid and everything. But it's a good perception. You get a good vibe when people talk about South Africa where you are at the moment. No, absolutely. And, and the World Cup had an amazing impact. Yeah. Um, the visibility of the World Cup, you know, these incredible stadiums that had been built, the energy out of the country and, you know, the the vuvuzelas and the impact that they've had on the yeah. So really very positive view, I think, of the country um, in terms of what is achievable here mm. Um, mm. and the amount of change that can happen, the energy that's coming out of it here, the creativity that's coming out. You know, even at an event like this, um, this is the largest technology gathering in Africa. Um, getting everybody together like this, I think the energy, the connection, the community that's created here is fantastic to be able to generate new things, new ideas, new technology. It's such an opportunity. Yeah, that's the part that I see is that there's so much that can be done here. Um, people are working on it. And really what we're trying to do is, is contribute into that in some way. Norm Judah, great chatting to you. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Akhil. It's great being here. Cheers.